type ride like it has in uh, Magic Mountain. The, the, tr the train comes, and on the bottom, you're uh, sitting upright, and then on the top, you're sitting, uh, you're, uh, you're uh, inverted. And uh, the Colossus type is something like this kind of situation where you're always you're always on the top of the track. So in order to analyze the physics of this, uh, we need to analyze the bottom, what happens on the bottom uh, case here, and then what happens on the top. Now you don't have to be actually going on a revolution type right to experience the physics of these. You can be the revolution type of situation can happen in other cases where uh, <coughs> maybe you have a person that's, uh, let's say, has a, a bucket of water. And they take the bucket of water and they swing it like this. And uh, they swing it up in the air. And by the time that the bucket goes up here, it looks like this. Right? So they're swinging it. And by the time that the water goes up to the top, it's also inverted. Okay, it's upright here, it's inverted there. So the question can ask, what's the minimum speed that the person should spin their hand? What should be the minimum speed of the hand at the top so that the water doesn't spill? Well, the same question would go over here. What's the minimum speed of the ride so that people don't fall? Okay, so the same kind, the physics of these two is the same. The physics of this will be a case where you may be like a car. The car driving on a, a bumpy road you know, it could be driving on a bumpy road, and the question can say, just a regular car even, um, what should be the, in this case, it's gonna, the question is going to be, what should be the maximum speed of the car? What should be the maximum speed of the car on the top of the bump so that the car doesn't fly off the bump? You see? Here, it, you shouldn't go more than a certain maximum speed. Here, you should go a cert, at, uh, at least a certain minimum speed, right? So the physics of that and here are the same here, the Colossus type and uh, the car. Also the Ferris wheel, the ride that is commonly where you sit like this. You know, in the Ferris wheel, you're always sitting upright, so It goes like that. So the physics of that would be similar to the Colossus type of ride too. You have the normal force that is always up. So the question could be what, what is the maximum velocity that it should have here, you know, and what is the velocity at the bottom. So the physics of that situation is the same and then of this is the, uh, is the same. So let's analyze the bottom first, what happens at the bottom. The bottom of this actually happens to be the same as the bottom of this. When you're at the bottom, you're sitting um, right side up. So it looks like this. And uh, when you're at the bottom, the normal force is uh, pushing you up, and your weight is pushing you down, mg. And the acceleration that you're accelerating in, the acceleration is towards the, cent the center of the circle. So the acceleration is this way here, ac. Okay, so what's going to end up happening is the normal force is going to end up being greater than the mg. It has to beat the mg in order for you to accelerate up. So we have n minus mg equals mac, which is mv squared over r. So n is equal to mg plus mv squared over r. 
So this is the situation of bottom of both rides. The bottom of both right, kind of right. This is your, the end describes your apparent weight at the bottom. Now let's analyze this. If the velocity is zero, what is your apparent weight? If the velocity is zero, then the apparent weight n is equal to mg. So that means that's normal. That's what you feel. So if the water bucket were to stop right here at the bottom, would anything weird happen? No. Just the water will feel its normal weight. It wouldn't spill. Same thing here. If the uh, tra train stops here, everybody feels regular. Same thing here. Same thing for the car at the bottom. If it stops, it stops. Nothing big deal. And the faster that the velocity goes, uh, as the velocity increases, as the velocity increases, the normal force uh, increases as well. So the heavier you feel, you know, uh, the, the normal force increases. Is there a maximum velocity at the bottom that it should go at? Let's see here. As the V goes bigger, N goes bigger, so really there is no limitation to what V can be. It could be as big as you want, and you'll just feel heavier, you know? So as V goes to infinity, N goes to infinity, so there is no really technically maximum velocity. You could have a train going like a revolution type right, going really fast, and then all of a sudden turn here, nobody's going to fall off. It's just that they're going to feel real heavy down there. And it will be like this feeling that they're going into the ground. You see? They're going into the ground, but they're not going to fly off. Same thing for a car. A car could be going like this and going down real fast. Let's say there's a big valley here. The car could be going real fast. And still nothing's going to happen. It's going to kind of ruin the shocks a little bit, but it's just going to make you press against the ground, you know. So there's no absolute maximum at the bottom of the rides, okay? Um, now, sometimes I could ask you questions like this on the test, for example. I could say, how fast should you go at the bottom so that people feel three times their weight? That's probably the most you should do it because after that, if you're, uh, if you're feeling too heavy, you start to get sick on a typical type of ride, you know. So there's probably a maximum that people can take before they get, they get sick and they want their money back, you know. <laughs> so if you're designing a ride like this, I could ask some question like this. What's the Vmax so that people feel three times their weight at the bottom? Okay, so what if I ask that? What should V be so that N is three times your weight? So on any kind of problem like this, you first set it up. I want you to set it up, so for the N, and then from there on set, set the N equal to Three times your weight means 3mg, right? Okay. And then uh, you put that into that equation. And then you have uh, 3mg minus mg, that's 2mg, right? And the m and the m cancel. And then you have V equals uh, square root of to RG. So if you're designing this ride, some kind of a ride at the at a, um, a carnival, so you basically have you have to design the ride based on what you want people to feel at the bottom and at the top. Now we're doing the bottom. And if the maximum we want them to feel is three times their weight, so you design it so that the velocity at their bottom is square root of two times the radius of the curve, what kind of curve this is going to be, times g. If you want them to feel four times their weight, you put four here, then you solve it. If you put five times their weight, you put five, and five, and 
solve it. Okay, now let's look 